Natascript 6.4 just came out and it's got an exciting new feature that I really want to share with you. It's a completely community driven pull request that's been submitted and it's been worked on for a while now, but it's finally here and that's 3D rotation. Let's take a look at a few different ways you can use that in Natascript apps. Welcome back. For limited time, I'm running a Natascript training webinar. You can find a link down below. Sign up and get your spot. I share some pretty valuable information in the webinar. And of course, at the end, I do pitch you my course, a Natascript Core Pro on there. But the webinar itself has a lot of value and you'll find a lot of useful information in it. And that's totally free. Just go ahead and sign up. So today I want to take a look at Natascript 6.4, brand new feature that just came out. And I want to show you a few different ways that you can use it. Let's take a look at the first way now. All right, so I got this new application. It's a Hello World app, but I've modified the template a little bit. Instead of data mining, I'm just calling the on tap event in the code behind file here. So I need to export a function called on tap. That's going to get some event data and args.object is the button itself. So I'm going to cast it as a view here and save it off here as a view. So here is the first way that we can use the new rotation. We can animate it. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the old way to do this first. So this is before 6.4. Here's what you can do. View.animate, and you can pass in some parameters here. So one of them is rotate. And let's say I wanna rotate this 180 degrees over a duration of five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds. I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna hit the tap button here and it's gonna rotate the button itself. So there it goes, it's gonna rotate 180 degrees. We could always do that since the beginning of native script animation APIs way back in version 1.5, I think it was. Now with version 6.4, here's what we can do. Rotate can not only take a number, but it can take an object. And this object, if I press control space in here, you'll see that it has X, Y, and Z in there. Okay, that's cool. So let's do X, let's say zero, Y is zero, and Z is 180. I picked these numbers for a reason. So you know how this translates to the old way of doing things. The Z dimension is going to spin it exactly the same way that you're used to. So if I hit tap now, you'll see that it spins around like that, around the center. It's not a really a 3D spin, right? Because the Z dimension is exactly the same as if we just had the number 180 in there. Now what makes this a three dimensional spin is the X and Y axes. So the Z axis, imagine if you're going straight down and you're looking right through your phone, but the X and Y axis are going like this. So that means when you're spinning around the X axis, let's take a look at what that results in. So I'm gonna say 180 here and set Z to zero. Let's hit tap here and you'll see the button spinning around the X axis. All right, so that's the horizontal axis. All right, what about the Y axis? What if we set uh, 270 there? All right, so let's do 270 and it's gonna spin this way around the Y axis. But you can also combine the spin. So for example, let's say we wanna do, I don't know, 180 here and then 180 here and then maybe 90 X. I'm gonna hit tab here and you can see all three axes are gonna be spinning at the same time. So you can get some really interesting, cool effects. Now you might be wondering, does this work the same way on iOS? And yes, it does. Uh, on Android, there were a few artifacts with a button because the button has an elevation. So you saw some weirdness going on there. But if you're animating a label, for example, you won't see that problem or something that doesn't have a shadow. Shadows are gonna be a little bit more intricate to animate, so you probably don't wanna do that. Let's take a look at iOS right now. So here's a button and I'm gonna run the same exact code. I'm gonna tap the button and you can see that it's gonna animate in a very interesting way in the 3D planes. I've set X to 90. That means we're not gonna see it when it's at the end, right? Let's say I set something ridiculous like 720 or maybe even bigger, like 5,000. What does that mean? That means it's gonna keep spinning and it's gonna spin pretty fast because it's gonna need to uh, get to that 5,000 degrees in five seconds. So there we go, we saw that example of that. Okay, animation, we're done with that topic. Let's go to the next topic, which is setting the rotation and keeping it static. How do you do that? Well, I'm gonna just gonna go to view here and say rotate and look at that. Now we have rotate, which we always did. Let's say I set it to 80. So when I tap the button, it's gonna get to 80 degrees and stay there. But now we have a couple of other options. Rotate X, 
let's say rotate X will be 80. I tap the button and rotate X is 80. So that makes it uh, almost hard to see there. And then rotate Y, of course, let's set that to 80. When I tap, we got the rotation of Y also. And I can still tap the button and interact with it, which is, you know, it's a button. You can still interact with it even though it's rotated, which is cool. Notice there is no rotate Z property here because rotate Z is just rotate. For naming conventions, I think they should have exposed the rotate Z property also just to keep things a little bit more consistent, but that's just me. Okay, so we're done with the second way of using it, which is programmatically setting this in code, the rotation property. Since we can do it in code, why can't we do it in CSS, right? CSS on the web has had rotation for a while, 3D rotation also, and NativeScript has had rotation for a while in CSS, but not 3D. So let's see how we can use this. I'm gonna go over to the main page XML here, and I'm gonna affect the label this time. So let's go to the label, and I'm gonna add a class called rot. Yeah, rot. So there's our class in the CSS file, and I'm gonna say transform, and then here are our rotate options. So we can say rotate. Notice there's a lot more different rotate options in CSS. So we can say rotate uh, 180, and you can see that our label is flipped upside down. Technically, it's not a flip, it's a rotation, because if you flip the phone upside down, you can still read it. All right, so that's rotation 180. Now, that's the Z axis. Now you have this 3D option here where you provide three dimensions. So let's say you want 80 for X. Let's, let's stay away from 80 for X, okay? That's too close to not visible. Let's go with something like 10, 190, and 30. All right, so now there you go. There's our label, it's rotated. Let's give it a little bit more in the Y direction. And there we go, you can see that a little bit better now. Finally, you have these other options. Rotate X, rotate Y, and rotate Z, all being separate. And you can probably imagine what these do. So I'm gonna just demonstrate rotate Y there. And you can see that the combination will work just the same. So I'm pretty stoked about this new change. This is gonna bring a whole new palette of designs to NativeScript. Finally, we have it in NativeScript and I'm pretty happy about that. Let me know what you think about this new 3D rotation down below in the comments and subscribe if you're not already. I will see you in the next video and happy NativeScripting.